Welcome to what really is the proper introduction to Ruskin's gardens, because this is the garden that Ruskin himself created uh, to be the entrance to his whole estate. Um, and it's a very remarkable garden. In fact, it's a, a totally unique garden because it's an allegorical garden. That is to say that it tells a story. Um, and the story that it tells is the passage of the soul from hell to paradise. Uh, it's a big story in a small garden, but... It's essential to understand that Ruskin was in love with a poet, an Italian poet from the Middle Ages, called Dante Alighieri. And he wrote her magnificent, huge poem called The Divine Comedy, which is all about the soul's journey from hell to heaven. And where we take up the story, Dante meets with the poet Virgil at the foot of the mountain of purgatory. And this is the very point at which, having left hell behind, they are faced with the ascent up towards paradise. And Ruskin wanted to think in terms of his estate as being a paradise, being a, a, a place in which man and nature were in harmony. Uh, and so here the journey begins. We've crossed from hell, uh, which is on the other side of the water, uh, towards this plain um, uh, of burnt and charred sort of cinders and we arrive at the foot of a mountain. There's a, just a narrow little uh, entranceway into this mountain, a small path that goes up between the rocks and it's guarded by an angel at the top um, and a door around which flames are licking. So let's begin our journey as we go through this door and ascend through the terraces of the seven deadly sins. So we're going to atone for our sins, our seven deadly sins, before we reach uh, the seven graces. And the seven graces are going to bless us on our journey up to paradise. And so close to hell are we, today, the car park, that the ground is still scorched from the fires of hell. So the ground here is covered in charcoal. You can see the burnt remnants, as it were, of the flames of hell that have burnt and scorched the ground. And what Dante and Virgil encounter here are some huge rocks and great stones. And these stones are in fact the stones that the prideful must lift up on their backs and carry to the top of the mountain. So this most deadly of all sins is pride. And the rocks are there to weigh down the prideful and bring them, as it were, down to earth. So the planting here is all about prideful plants. It's about the big swanky plants that are show-offs in the plant world. Look at the size of these leaves. Uh, look at the colour of the flowers. Uh, they're the show-offs and they've got to be brought down to earth. So like any mountain, as we ascend the slopes, we encounter scree that is all manner of rocks that have tumbled down on the mountain and Dante and Virgil head upwards through this scree slope and they notice in amongst the rocks the rounded forms that appear at first to be rocks but actually tremble as they walk past them and these indeed are the backs of the envious and the envious must hide their gaze from you as you pass because their eyelids, it's rather horrid, their eyelids are sewn together with thorns so that they are punished if they look with envy upon others. And so the planting here, of course, is thorn bushes and barbed wire um, and symbols of pain and suffering. The ground becomes increasingly fiery, indeed purple in the colour of it, more volcanic. And from the ground erupts these uh, fumaroles of gas, today represented by the grasses that shoot out of the ground. And they notice this enormous knot writhing across the surface of the earth. Uh, and that turns out to be the bodies fighting one another of the wrathful or angry. And they tie themselves in an ever tightening knot. And you'll notice that the, we've represented the bodies here and the great knot with sheep's wool. 
Uh, sheep's wool is actually used in this garden just like all the other local materials. All these stones come from the area. We decided when we restored this garden that we wanted in Ruskinian style to use only materials that came from uh, from the environment and came from around here. So it is our job every every few years at least um, to renew the she sheep's wool. We'll find more sheep's wool in a, in a little while as we ascend, uh, doing a rather different job. Of course, the word Brantwood means steep wood. And as you'll have discovered already, mountain gardens involve a lot of going uphill. And it's no different for Dante and Virgil as they ascend the Purgatorial Mount. It's all uphill. And uphill is an anathema in particular to the slothful, the lazy. Uh, and so the terrace of laziness or uh, sloth is represented here by these grasses because there's a wind blowing constantly, driving the slothful to go up the hill, but they're then forced back down, they fall back down, and then they're forced up again, and then they fall back down. Uh, and so to represent that sort of pull of gravity and that stream of sort of pressure, we have these grasses sloping on the slope all the way down. They come to an area of woodland, an orchard, effectively, where the fruit trees are almost sort of appear to be upside down. They appear to be dangling over something, and their fruits are hanging down low on the branches. And this is the terrace of gluttony, the greedy, the people who thirst endlessly for food, but the fruit is always just slightly out of reach, hanging above their heads. Represented here by these pear trees that have been uh, cut, espaliered, we call it, to uh, represent the trees hanging their fruits down, upside down, above the mouths of the gluttonous. As they proceed past these uh, fruit trees and woodland, they come to an area where the ground appears to be wet, permanently damp, in a sort of mossy, sort of uh, dewy sort of way. And in amongst those sort of mossy, damp areas of the ground, they spot these little sparkling pieces of gold. The dampness, it turns out, is the tears of the avaricious who weep for their lost gold that's been cast on the ground just endlessly out of reach. And so we've represented that with flowers that throughout the seasons produce little small delicate yellow flowers, one sort or another, from spring through to autumn. And at the same time, these stumps, this is known in garden terms as a stumpery. And the old the stumps of old trees that have fallen here at Brantwood have been taken down to the lake, soaked over the winter till they produce these wonderful sculptural shapes and then brought up and embedded into the garden. And in the hollows of these trees, um, the rain will collect and we have that sort of wonderful dewy sort of look to things. Uh, these stumps are getting a bit ancient now. We're going to need to pull some uh, new ones out of the woods and into the, uh, into the lake to weather them and bring them into play. We come at last to the final and in some respects, and oddly, the least deadly of all the sins, terrace of lust. I said we'd, ex we'd encounter sheep's wool again, and as you can see here, we've got an absolutely enormous display of sheep's wool. Dante and Virgil encounter a, uh, an area of a sort of boiling, hot, fetid mud. Uh, and in that hot, fetid mud, um, with flames licking out of it, um, they see the lips of the lustful gasping for sort of air as they get swallowed in the sort of um, morass of their own sin. Uh, and the um, gardeners here decided that this sheep's wool, which smells pretty rank when it gets wet, uh, would be a perfect uh, way to represent that mud. And also, um, if you look closely at this sheep's wool, you'll discover that there's quite a lot of, of a sort of waxy red um, paint in it. And that waxy red paint is known as ruddle, and it is applied to the belly of the tup or the ram. Uh, and uh, when he mates with the ewe, uh, he leaves a little bit of that behind. So, of course, it's associated with fertility, uh, with lust, if you like. 
and uh, they thought it would be rather fun to incorporate it in the uh, uh, in the way the garden was made. In fact, the first gardener who helped put this together um, spent quite a lot of time trying to sort of use it like a sort of mousse to. Um, coax it into sort of little spikes of flame coming up off of the uh, off the wool but unfortunately on hot days it rather sort of flopped so uh, that doesn't happen these days but these little house leek plants here um, will put forward a rather phallic flower um, and the lips are represented by these enormous sort of may west type lips there uh, and the flames of lust by the formia uh, these red grasses, if you like, that, uh, that shoot out of the mud. So we've left the flames of lust and the heat and toil of the uh, seven deadly sins as we ascended the uh, Purgatorial Mount. And whilst we're still in purgatory, our soul has passed from all of that sort of heat and toil into something altogether greener uh, and more kindly. Dante and Virgil have entered, as it were, the cloud forest. They've come up into the green, cooler heights of the mountain. And here we're amongst these wonderful moss, mosses, this moss garden, the ferns, uh, bamboo growing, and the rhododendrons, all associated with mountain landscapes and coolness. And here we're to encounter the seven graces. The gardens are always a work in progress, and this area of the garden is, uh, is no exception. Here we are amongst the dead seven graces, um, and we have some sculptures to help us see those graces as we ascend the mountain. Uh, I'm afraid we don't have seven yet, um, but we will. Uh, and they represent such beautiful and wonderful virtues as kindness and humility and charity and fortitude. And they help you on your journey, your final part of your soul's journey, up towards the first circle of paradise. So we've arrived in the first circle of paradise. We've arrived in Ruskin's paradisal estate. Um, and Ruskin was a great believer in terracing in mountains. He wanted to create areas where you could cultivate, um, where you could rest, where you could grow things that would be good for you, uh, food and uh, medicinally and so forth. And so you would also, in the same uh, breath, you would protect the environment. You would stop the rapid flows of water, destructive flows of water. You preserve the nutrients of the soil. So terracing was really a big idea in Ruskin's way of managing Brantwood. And he intended to create and did create terraces uh, across the estate. And so this represents, as it were, the, the, the starting point for your journey of terraces in the landscape and the journey of the soul uh, in its relationship with nature. Well, that's all very grandiose. At another level, quite simply, it's a beautiful spot with lovely bird song permanently um, and a wonderful sense of being in the woods fully at last. The other thing is that it provides a well-earned uh, rest from the ascent of the, uh, of, of the mountain and a place of recreation. In Ruskin's time, it was actually used as a tennis court until a rather larger area for tennis was done down by the lake. And there's still a mark on the tree, one of the oak trees, where a net was hung uh, in order to stop the balls going off down the, uh, down the slope. So it doubled up as a place of, of, of fun uh, and a place of quiet contemplation. Ruskin called it his painter's glade. He was familiar with two particularly important illustrations of the Divine Comedy. One was by William Blake, who was uh, uh, not a poet or artist that Ruskin knew personally, um, but one whose work he knew, and Botticelli. Uh, Ruskin was particularly fond of Botticelli's illustrations of the Divine Comedy, and there's a drawing by Botticelli of, the, of a glade almost identical to this, to this one. 